Let me begin with an example here, I think, to make it easy to understand. Remember, previously we had uh, the pizza example. Uh, now we were talking about the pie. Now let's go with a hot dog. I'm gonna stick with the food metaphor here for a while, because I like it. So let's go look at a little dialogue here. Jane says, a hot dog is not quite what I had in mind for lunch. So they're looking at lunch, and Jane's saying, hot dog's not what I want. Fred says, we could, sit, we could consider going to a restaurant down the block. Okay, so we have a lunch situation. They want to get some food. Fred says, let's have a hot dog. And Jane says, eh, I don't know. I don't think I want a hot dog. Fred says, okay, you don't want a hot dog? Let's go to the restaurant. Jane says, nope, we can't go to the restaurant because I only brought $5. So they left their money at home. So you leave your money at home, you're not going to be able to go to the restaurant. I guess he didn't bring his credit card. Fred says, well then, unless you have a better option, I think we have no choice. Okay, so here we have the classic situation again. We can have a negotiation. Why? Because we have two groups or two people in this case. They have something similar, they have something different. What is similar? They both want to eat lunch. Uh, what is different? One is saying, let's buy a hot dog. Another one is saying, you know, I don't like that. So now we come into the situation of, well, they both have something in common. They both have something different. Jane says, I really don't want to eat a hot dog. So this is her key point she's coming up with. She's developing her goal package and it doesn't include a hot dog. And Fred is saying, I didn't know you hate hot dogs so much. So now they're trying to understand what's the situation. So Fred begins by saying, I didn't know this about you. I didn't know. So what he's actually saying is, can you explain this to me? What's the, what, what's the situation? What is it you're thinking of? Now this is quite different than what we've looked at before in our dialogues. Previously what we've looked at is, I just tell you what I want and you tell me what you want. And then I give you my next offer, you give me your counter offer. And we keep laying out our positions and we may change them a little bit. In this case, what we're actually doing is, Fred is coming out and saying, look, uh, why is this hot dog thing so important to you? What's the deal with hot dogs? And Jane explains, I don't hate hot dogs, but I'm on a diet and I can't eat too much bread. Ah, okay. So now what we've done is Jane has explained why she's against the hot dog. So her goal package is no hot dog, but she does want to eat. And Fred's saying, well, explain. And so she explains, well, it's not that I'm against hot dogs, it's that I'm on a diet. The diet, in my diet, I can't eat too much bread every day. So this is over my limit. So in this way, we begin to explain why you have this goal, why you have this target. Fred says, we have to compromise anyway. Since we only have enough money for one hot dog, hot dog costs $5, we will have to cut it in half. So you only get half of the bread. So Fred is saying, hey, don't worry. You're on a diet. You're not, you're not supposed to eat so much bread. You're not allowed to eat so much bread. Don't worry. You'll get half the bread because we're going to cut the hot dog in half. That sounds like a good idea, right? And Jane says, yeah, I guess that is better. So we're improving but I'm not supposed to eat any bread today. So now we're beginning to understand Jane's situation a little bit more. By explaining what her situation is, Fred can understand the case, uh, what she needs in her package. Fred says, maybe we can find a mutually satisfactory answer. So now we begin with the orientation. I'm beginning to understand what you're thinking. So can we come up with an idea. Can we come up with a solution that makes you happy and makes me happy? So this from the very beginning, this is the goal. This is key to an integrative uh, negotiation approach. From the very beginning, I want to give you what you want. I want you to get what you want. I want you to give me what I want. I want us all to be happy in other words. Did I say that right? Does that make sense? Jane says, you mean a way to make everyone happy? I don't see how. And Fred says, I want to avoid the bread. Yeah, you want to avoid the bread, and I don't mind eating the bread. 
Jane says, right. And Fred says, we can take the hot dog out for you and I'll eat the bread. So the idea here is quite simple actually, right? Fred can eat the bread, one whole bun, and Jane can eat the hot dog, one whole hot dog. So they both end up getting half of the food or half of the calories for all, approximately, right? But rather than cutting the whole sandwich in half and half of the hot dog, half of the bread you get, half of the hot dog, half of the, ha of the bread I get, instead we change the parameters and say, look, let's just separate it in a different way. It's still cut in half, but it's cut in half differently. Is that okay for Jane? Yeah, that's great because Jane's goal was not not to eat the hot dog, but not to eat the bread. Now, how do we know that? Because she told us. She told us. Rather than just telling us what she wants to tell us, which is she wants to get more, she wants to lose less. That's the distributive approach. She begins at the beginning by telling us why. What's the reason? What's the purpose? Helping us understand her situation. And in that way, we can give her what she wants. Okay, that's a very simple little example. Now let's go on to a business example, which I think actually you can relate to. So here we have a job interview. So you go to a job, you want to get a job, and in this uh, interview, you can negotiate things. Maybe this is like a second or third interview for the job. And in this case, the applicant is going to bargain for his salary. Alex says, what is your target starting salary? And Fred says, I was thinking $50,000. And Alex says, that's too high for us. Our starting salary for this position is $40,000. So here we have, again, classic situation, right? Two groups, two parties, they have something common and they have something different. I want you to work for my company, you want to work for my company, we like to hire you, you like to work here, but I want to pay you 40 and you want to get 50. So that's a difference, so now we can negotiate. Fred says, I can't take your offer if the salary is that low. I have many alternatives. And Alex responds, I understand you may see this offer as low, but let me explain our position. Our firm has very clear guidelines for starting salaries. We are inflexible on this point. Now I like this uh, approach here because what this is telling us is at the beginning of the negotiation, very early, we begin to explain things. So, yes, my offer is 40 and your demand is 50. Well, that's a big gap, right? But let me tell you why it's 40. And if you can understand why it's 40, then maybe we can change the situation somehow so that we can both be happy. Fred says, I appreciate your position, but I think I'm worth more. There are other companies offering compensation well over 40, so this is good too. Fred is explaining what's his situation. He can go to another company. How do I know that? He's telling me. Why would he go to another company? He's telling me why. They offer more money. Do they have a better job that he likes? No. Do they have a better a boss or manager that he likes or admires? No, that's not why. He's telling me clearly. He can go to another competitor because he'll get more than 40, okay? That makes it clear for me to understand. Alex says, perhaps we can find a mutually beneficial solution. A key, key word there, mutually beneficial. That is beneficial for both of us, win-win. That's the same as the integrative idea. Can you explain how you came up with your number 50,000? Okay, now, good. How did you get 50? I know our problem is we differ on 50. I want 40, you want 50. How did you come up with this number 50? And Fred explains, the industry average for this position is 42,000. 
And to be honest, I also have extra college courses. That makes me more valuable. Okay, I'm beginning to understand. So the average is 42. All the companies together, 42 is the average. You also took some college courses, so you think you know something. And Alex says, what kind of courses are we talking about? So please explain more so I can understand. In fact, I am just slightly less than six months away from completing a master's degree in management. I think that gives me a value-added feature. Okay, so Fred is explaining here why his value is more than 40. And, you know, he just tells me he's valuable. That's hard to understand. Lots of people do that. Lots of people just say, hey, I'm worth more. Pay me more. And then why? Because I'm better. Why? Because I'm smarter. Well, what do you mean? You see, by explaining it in more detail, we begin to understand the situation. And if I can understand the situation, maybe I can figure it out and give you something that you want. Although I told you I can't change that price. That price is fixed by my company. But if you explain to me, maybe there is something I can do. And that's exactly what we find out. Alex says, would you mind telling me, are you taking these cl classes at Lakeview University? That must be the university nearby the company. And Fred says, yes. And you know, the cost there is very high. So school is expensive. And Alex says, our company offers a college payment program. If you take classes related to your job, half of the cost is paid by our company. So this is great. This is a tuition payment opportunity. And the company will pay half. And Fred says, it seems we have something in common. It does sweeten the package for me. So sweeten the package, that's a great little uh, phrase, right? So something in common, great. What we're doing here is we're trying to find something in common. We're working to find something in common, working very hard to find something in common. We're saying, hey, explain to me, why do you think you have more value? Well, because I'm going to have my master's degree soon in business, an MBA. That's great, okay. So, tell me more. I'll, I go to Lakeview College, okay, that's nearby. Tell me more. I think it's expensive. Hey, great. Our company helps to pay for that. So we begin right away by finding out something in common. That commonality helps us to create a platform to work together towards win-win. Alex says, we also have a special agreement with Lakeview University that our employees receive a 20% discount on all classes in their business school. So not only do, does the company help pay for your education, not only do they take a large percentage, half, and pay, also your overall tuition is lower, so that means the half you pay is gonna be smaller. This is sounding like a better and better deal all the time. And Fred says that that does add up to some money saved. But I still think my degree is worth more. So he's saying, yes, I'll get some money for college, I'll save some money on tuition, but still I think that my degree makes me more valuable. And Alex responds by saying, after you graduate, there is an automatic pay increase of 10%. And Fred says, so that would put my pay at 46,200, 10%. And I would save tuition expense for my last semester. And Alex responds, exactly. When you consider all you get with our company, the difference with other firms is slight, small. We value continuing education for all our employees and try to accommodate them. And Fred says, this does change the situation, although I still think the starting salary is too low. And Alex explains, our company has very tight cost controls in order to increase competitiveness. Rather than emphasizing individual pay in dollars, we try to reward our employees through numerous programs such as education. 
and Fred says, I'm starting to think this offer is attractive after all. I'll need to consider the options. So I think this is a great little example. What we end up with is this idea that, well, I'm focused on my goal package. My goal package is that starting salary. I need it to be 50. But you know, maybe you did not have all the information. If I give you more information, I try to understand, then maybe your goal package can include other things that you did not think of before. So by keeping the negotiation going, by understanding more and more, we can come to a conclusion that is win-win for both sides. So let me explain to you our company will pay for education. Our company will help you get a lower education cost. Our company also has an opportunity to get a raise after you get your a degree finished after you finish your degree and on top of that our company really is focused on controlling costs that you should understand helps our company have a better future so that should motivate you to work for us we're not just giving money away left and right we're really looking at merit so I want you to understand our company and I want to understand you what you need and in this way by understanding more and more about each other they come to a better conclusion. How did they do that? They expanded the pie. They were not just focused on the pie. The pie was just the pay. 40,000, 50,000. That pie is hard to change. If that pie is stuck at 40, but you want 50, I can't change that pie size. What am I gonna do? Fixed, win-lose, right? Distributive. What can I do? I try to understand you. I try to explain me. Let's be honest and try to understand each other's position and then we can change that pie, expand that pie. I get what I want and you get what you want. Okay, so that's the fundamental idea of this integrative bargaining approach.